Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to episode 41 of BDA Chat. Um, sorry we didn't, we weren't around last week, uh, it, it got a bit mental around here, and we just didn't have enough time to record the podcast. So, uh, let's get stuck into 41. Um, this week we're going to be talk, talking, talking, talking about storytelling, and, and how you can use storytelling within marketing, it's quite a powerful tool. Um, so we're going to get into that, and to help me to get into that, to uncover you know, the, the fable, the myth, the... Um, uh, the the uh, fable, good word. Yeah, well, I've, yeah. I've been researching mm. storytelling. Yeah, fables, like fables, myth, mythology, yeah, any, any, all that sort of st- all that all that storytelling goodness. We've got Rob and we've got David. Um, so, episode forty-one, storytelling. 41. Who wants to start with their fable um, and, and leading us into how we how we can use storytelling within marketing? Who wants to go first? Um, I, I could start with something I've seen. Uh, cool. Rather than kind of set up too much, I think we can get on to some of the, the do's and don'ts. And before we get into that, sorry. Okay, cool. Before we get into that, <laughs> how is everybody? Right, quickly. Yeah. How is everybody? I feel all like right. I've not introduced us to the, to the world. Is everyone all right? I've been doing a lot of flat packing. My back's a bit sore. So if I move like this. You have been doing a lot of flat packing. A lot of flat packing. Mm-hmm. Been a lot of screwing. Zzz. Yeah. But yeah, it's good. Well, you don't have any of those noises because you just use the Allen key that comes with it. But anyway. You still, if you used it. Anyway. And um, David, how are you? Good, thank you. You wasn't on the last, I don't think you was on the last podcast. No, I wasn't. He's yeah. been elusively, been elusive. I have. the elusive That's David Knowles. Have you been in Scotland? I haven't, No. but I'm, Apparently you can I'm see looking Scotland out for thunder window. snow at the moment. Yeah, oh, thunder yes. snow. Thunder snow. Has thunder snow hit you where you are? Yeah. Up north, it has a good possibility. It's yeah. Friday afternoon, so anyway, let's get cracking. It's half past two. Um, I like to just let people yeah. know that it's yeah. Yeah, live. We're going to get this one out this afternoon. So, storytelling. Oh, storytelling. Sorry, Rob, I've derailed you. Let's put you back on no, track. No, before we get into probably some of the details and the theories and this, that, and the other, and the reasons, I'm just going to share something that I saw probably a couple of months ago now. And I shared it internally at BDA, um, but I thought it was a fantastic example of storytelling. Mm. Um, and it's called, it's, it's a slightly morbid topic. It's called End Family Fire. Now, this was uh, an American website, an American movement. Oh, I remember this. Um, yeah. Because the, the statistics behind um, accidental firearms deaths in homes are, are very high. Um, so, anyway, this movement had set up a website, um, and the whole story on this page was quite compelling. Now, obviously, it's quite an emotional uh, and, and tragic topic. But the way it's been written and the way it's been presented um, really get you. Um, and, and the reasons why, well, firstly, the user interface, the design of it, it's, you have to go and see it for yourself. It's, it's endfamilyfire.org. But what it starts with is, is a zoomed up picture, you know, top down of a gun. And then as you scroll on your mouse, it just zooms up from this yeah. and it reveals a bit of text and it starts to tell this story really powerfully written. Then you scroll again, it zooms out a bit further and there's a child playing around these boxes where this gun's just sat in. Anyway, it's building this kind of tension with imagery, um, but also it's telling this really powerful story backed up by stats, etc. cetera. Um, and it just caught my eye, because one, it's, it, it's quite stunning to look at, two, it's really easy to use, and three, well, I read it from start to finish. It doesn't affect me directly in any way, mm. but actually the story had me. So even in something that I didn't have an interest or necessarily a connection with, the story on this site really grabbed me. Um, I just wanted to open that as a, a bit of a share up because um, it's worth a look at. You know, and and I think that's the, one of the things that stories are all about, is that drawing you in. Yeah, well, that's uh, how make, we've all learned, making isn't it? Connections. Mm. You know, well, funny, if when I was researching storytelling mm. for this, uh, just to, not for the podcast, but I, I went to Wikipedia and yeah. I, I typed in storytelling. And that's when I came up with like fables and, and how stories are originally used to, uh, as a, an education piece about the past mm. Um, mm. and about you know, things that have gone on and how to educate people. So... Um, well, yeah, if, I think. if we think back, you know, it, it's actually stories that are the things that have, that have enabled human beings to work as a mass group of beings. You think of things like the Bible. Um, it's the Bible and what that uh, brought in terms of values, uh, ways of doing things, mm. ways of looking at the world, I suppose, which created or helped create order. Mm. If, we, if we think back and, and the other various... Um, biblical type things that are out there in the world yeah. sorry um, so it's all about stories it's all about the creation of something that we can believe in mm. money is another yeah. example of that money doesn't actually exist it's it's a, a physical thing well, it doesn't exist given, in my bank account yeah. if, if it, anyone's asking it's something asking. we've we've created so it, that has a value that we can trade yeah. things for and there's essentially a story that sits behind that but stories are what we've learned from 
forever, basically. Look at cavemen, look at what's on the walls. You know, they're all stories um, which mm. will probably help to educate people way back when. So how can, how can people, how can marketers, how can agencies, how can businesses use storytelling to sell or to advertise yeah. their products? Well, for me, I mean, for, for so long we saw marketing, promotional activity was always about pushing, pushing your benefits, pushing your, your, you know, your products, your services. Mm. Um, but this is, this is more than that, isn't it? I mean, storytelling is more than that. There is the new form of marketing that, that people are talking about. Um, we, it's been around for a while, but some brands do yeah, it, it has really been well. Around for a while. It's been around for a while, but more and more people are picking up up on it. But it, it's mm. been something we've been doing here and trying to do for a long, long time. It's it's more than just kind of listing the information and, and giving you the hard facts. It's actually about shared values. I think you buy into brands that you share a value with, and I think that's where if you can start to tell mm. your brand mm. story and, yeah. and know your audience to that level, where actually your values are, are similar to theirs and there's that shared belief. I think story, that's when stories begin to really take a shape, take, mm. you know, and have that effect. I always think of it, yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. I think it's more now, in the past it was, here's my product, here's my, uh, here's my cup, I'm going to sell you this cup. Whereas today I feel it's now about who's, who's holding the cup. So it's about how I interact with yeah. this cup and it's about the story that I'm going to create by owning this cup and what this cup does for me. Mm -hmm. And that story is now what is basically used in marketing and how yeah. you, is how you tell that story, how every, everything involves around that and how if you've got, I've been listening to, um, there's a podcast that Microsoft have put out. Uh, it's, I think it's called The Art of Storytelling or something along those lines. Yeah, I we'll put the one, links yeah. in, in, the, in the show notes. It is a really good listen um, and they go into all of the the details, especially because Microsoft have got tons and tons of data from, from the various things that they do mm -hmm. and various in involvements they have. And one of them um, was to do with, I think it was to do with the NHS and um, uh, donor replacement and how, organ replacement, and how they can, how they've been using that data to tell stories, but they use the data that they've got and then they look at it from the actual, the patient's view. So they tell that story about that patient mm. and how the data that Microsoft have gleaned from all the information they have on, yep. on, on surgery and what need, needs to be happening to tell a story. Yeah. And it's much more engaging. It's in the way of breaking down the data and making it more digestible, but turning it through a story centered, centered on human beings, on the, the actual users, mm -hmm. the, you know, their story, their, their, what's happening with them. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, I'll put it in the show notes anyway. Have a listen if you get, get a chance. No, so definitely take a look at that. Yeah, it's really quite interesting. Because, uh, you know, a story, what we're trying to evoke, you know, stories are about evoking emotion, emotion aren't they? Definitely. Um, and see, brands and marketers are using it increasingly, uh, increasingly using stories to create those emotions, to create those emotional links to their product. Um, because there are, you know, there are th three main... Um, Kind of chemical reactions or chemicals oh. that we're looking to try and here comes a science <laughs> bit, David. I sense a science bit, Lee. So what do you have to help me with? Is dopamine, cortisol? Was it cortisol? Is that the bad one? Uh, and, uh, that is and definitely dopamine. And dopamine, and endorphins. endorphins. Yeah, where have we got dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphins? Yeah, cortisol is the one we don't want. That's adrenaline. Is that yeah, adrenaline cortisol, related? So that makes okay. you intolerable. Into intolerant and irritable and uncreative, you know, all those emotions that you don't want someone to feel when they're associating you with their brand or you no. want somebody to walk, don't want someone to walk into a meeting feeling like that no. either because they're going to be uncreative, etc. But what we do want is people to feel um, this kind of dopamine release in their head which makes them have more focus, mm. more motivation or remember things that little bit more because you've kind of drawn okay. them into this story mm. that this happened and, and then that happened and... Do you know what? I'm not going to tell you what happened next, and then you're going to you're going to go. Oh, that's, I want to know what happens next. Tell mm. me what happened next. Mm. What okay. did she say to you? The end of EastEnders, isn't it? Yeah, it's that, like, dum, 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 is, dum, is dum, that dum, sort of thing, or yeah. is the oxytocin, which is that you know, creating greater generosity, trust, and a bond with your audience, so that empathy. So this happened in my life, and it was really quite horrible. And because of that, this happened to me. And that was really quite mm. horrible too. And 
you know, you start as an audience, you start thinking, well, that's happened to me as well. And that is really horrible. Mm. And I, I believe in you and I trust you and I have a bond with you now because you've got a shared um, set of emotions or something which is awful, mm. which you can't relate with, but you know is not a good thing. See, I, yeah, I find this tremendously interesting because, you know, we all look at that and we, we know emotions, but actually yeah. behind emotions, there's science here. Mm. There, there's chemicals, there, there's hormones that are being released into people's bodies um, that drive these emotions. Yeah. You create, you, you, you hands down win if you can create feeling and empathy with people. Uh, absolutely. Mm. I was not interested in a, um, I've never been interested in an Apple Watch. Apple, you can send me one if you like, but anyway. Um, never been interested in one. And then I watched, um, I think Apple released their new Apple Watch, and I was just digging around their site. And I, there's three videos, or there might be even more now, there's, this, there's definitely three videos about Apple Watch and how the users that were using Apple Watch mm. changed, um, changed their lives, or mm. actually saved their life, in actual fact. And, and um, you think, oh, this is unreal. But when you watch it, it's actually, it's got nothing to do with Apple Watch. It's just, a, well, yeah, it's got the one particular feature that mm. the Apple Watch offers. Um, but it, the story is just told so not it's just face to camera it's just someone just mm. telling their story and you just you watch it and you go oh, I really like that and if I was in that situation maybe it could help me or if someone else is, and they use it in such strange things it's like it's just it's just people you, it's not it's not people you expect to actually own an Apple Watch it's just everyday people mm. it doesn't it doesn't and I th it's just a lovely way of conveying a message through a story yeah so I'll put them in the show notes as well. You have a look at those. But I think one of the things is, is making people care. Yeah. Making but you don't need to sell at that particular no. point. It's not about, it's not about, oh, buy now. It's about leaving, uh, oh dear. Don't worry about that. It's a, I'll sort that one out. Carry on. <laughs> it's about leaving, leaving a note, leaving a post-it note in your brain, I always think. Mm. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to buy that product now, but I've warmed to the brand. I've warmed to the idea of it. I remember the emotion you created when, when I saw this video. And I like that. And so I'm going to you know, align myself with this. And then next time around, if I do have some spare cash and someone said to you know, you would make that decision and, and purchase that yeah. particular brand on that product. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and we, you know, we've done, we, we, we got a big video project kind of looming, haven't we? And we did quite a lot of research into kind of emotive video and storytelling video. Um, and there's just so many little uh, elements, ingredients, isn't there, that goes into some of these ones that we saw. So some of the ones we looked at were uh, the National Lottery. I don't know if anyone's seen it out there. National Lottery one, the guy goes away for work. Um, he obviously works as a fisherman or something. When he comes back, his wife has gone, the house is empty. Um, and then it, you think she's left him because she's been solicited. Well, it, it tells a story throughout. Yes. Yeah, so it, plant, it plants the seed that you think it, she's fed up is with... Exactly. He's gone away shots, at sea. It's like she's a bit fed up with him always being away from home. She's bringing up the family on her own, etc. He's always yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he returns home she's left. and it's plants the seed that she's left him. But then he runs down the road like in a, in a fit of panic. Um, and then he, there's this house at the bottom of the road where she stood at and she's like, we won. And she won the lottery and bought the house. But this advert, just the music, the setting, it's, it's shot in a way that fantastically yeah. acted. Yeah. And again, it just tells a story. It, it keeps you hooked in. It what makes you watch the end. I mean, National Lottery adverts, I've never really paid much attention to. Mm. I didn't even know it was a National Lottery advert right to the end. And that's a great story, isn't it? You're there, you want to see the outcome. And sometimes there's a little surprise there at the end. Discovery. Yeah, Dis discovery. It's a key let, word with it, isn't it? Let, let someone discover how the story... Well, let them, let them get on board. You know, if you, if you tell, if you give them an outcome or if you know what everything is right up front, there's, there's no, there's no discovery there. There's no, oh, I want to find out what happens or there's nothing. It's just, oh, that's what it is. Here we go. You might as well watch the first 10 seconds and tune out because mm -hmm. I know what this is about. It's like if you, it's like if a Lynx advert came on, oh, Lynx at right at the top. Oh, I know what this is about. I'm off. Yeah. You don't need, you, you know, so to be fair, even if they put National Lottery at the front of you, but, oh, I know this is about to try and stand with National Lottery. Yeah, you'd probably switch you'd just, off, you'd switch off. You'd be like, oh, you have no right. idea into the last three know. seconds of that yeah. advert. But, you know, you see that quite a lot in these emotive ones. So, yeah, I, th I just thought it was a really good example. We saw a couple of other ones out there that we've all seen, but that was one of the ones that stood out for me. Good music, well acted, great script, a really nice story in that video. And only the, the brand creeps in right at the very end. And it leaves I, you with a good feeling. It leaves you talking about it. Yeah. I think so there's, there's, I think story, storytelling is not, you know, it's, it's nothing new. But, and brands are using it to tell a, a customer's point of view and, and how they interact uh, with, their, with their, 
with their products and how they can better service them or through services and stuff like that. Oh, we've got someone at the door. Oh, oh it's got someone at the door. In a random moment of randomness, <laughs> and, and in, in, in all fairness, in telling stories, so we might as well just tell the story because you'll be li looking at this again. Well, what has just happened? So basically, um, a young girl has just knocked on our door and asked us about if we do work experience. And uh, we've just sort of shepherded her through to go see Sam, who handles all that sort of stuff. So there you go. And it's completely unscripted. And so that leaves us in a little bit of a... Um, it does a little bit. So we'll wait for Rob to come back. In the meantime, we'll probably just do a little pause. Well, thank you for showing the work experience girl to where uh, work experience girl needs to go. Yeah. Oh, and we've got mic problems. So I don't know where we were. Um, we were talking about. We're talking about discovery, I think. Discovery and uh, yes, and so I think that, that one of the, the um, I suppose one of the issues or one of the, the main problems with storytelling is when you get that story um, and you, you you storyboard it and you plan it out and you've got music and you've you, you've got a story. Um, but it's getting to that point. It's getting yeah. to that story. It's where mm. it's all very well. So, oh, I want a story. I want to. I want to make some sort of yeah, emotive yeah, video. Yeah. But where do you get the story from? Where where do you find that nugget of? Because everybody, most we we found that most, a lot of the video projects that we've had in the past, people, oh, okay, I want to tell a story about our brand, and they tell the story about the brand, which is the wrong way to look at it. You need yeah. to tell the story about, I think, you need to tell the story about the people that are actually yeah. using the, the ideas rather than, but it's finding that, that story. Some of the storytellers, the, you know, some of the you know, people like Andrew Stanton worked Pixar, mm -hmm. Wally, -E and um, various other projects for Pixar. He, he, uh, they, they say start with what you know. So the feelings that you have felt in the past, the experiences you can pick up can bring back from your memory to say, I know how I felt at that point. Let me write about how I feel mm -hmm. or how I felt mm -hmm. at that time and use that experience to shape the story that I want to tell. So if that's a loss, you know, we can say, um, you know, you can write about that loss and about the feelings you felt at that time or the excitement you felt mm -hmm. as well. So that's, that's one area that a number of writers that I've researched have said, just start with your experiences. Yeah, I think it's the same for music, isn't it? Like mm. singer-songwriters, they start, they, a lot of their songs come from real experiences and emotions that they felt. I, I, one thing I see that's kind of missed out of a lot of storytelling, and sometimes we start, not here, but when we've spoken to people, they start two or three uh, steps in the process ahead of where they should be, and it's, it's that why question. Mm. Why? What you know? What are you trying to tell? Why? What are you trying to get out of this? What What are you trying to do? Mm. And it's that why, yeah. why, why question. Because um, sometimes you know the, the simple the, in a brief you'll get because we want brand awareness, but you can drive deeper than that. You know what is brand awareness? What does brand mm. awareness mean to you? So again, you know I think there's that really early phase in any project. I don't think it's just about storytelling. I just think it's about marketing in general. Is why? Why are you doing something? And mm. drill it down. I think that's where any story starts is, is you know, the reason behind yeah. it. Yeah, you bang on. Whatever you're trying to say, you can, or whatever, whatever message you're trying to convey, you'll get it over far easier if you tell a story to someone yeah. than you will because everybody's ears will prick up. It's like, oh, I've got a story. The other day I went down the road and you just, you, people start listening to whatever. Mm. And then I think it's just so much easier. But you're right. You do have to start asking those awkward questions. Not the awkward, but those difficult questions. It's like, well, why do you want to do this? Yeah. And you have to challenge the yeah. brief. You have to challenge what's been put in front of you to try and get to that. Because nine times out of ten, the brief is not really focused on story at all. It's focused on end result. And mm. which, is a, which is a way, you know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a start. Mm. And you need to have some sort of an end result, you know. But how do we get there? If What's yeah. the building blocks to, to, we, to get to that result? Yeah, the other part is, is for me, it's, it's got to be understanding that audience. You know, yeah. understanding who is going to be reading this story or watching this video and it goes back to all the things that you were saying how do we want them to feel so let's understand them what what do they need what are they looking for um how do we want them to feel because once you have that once you know what you're trying to do and why you're doing it and what your customer wants and needs yeah. then it starts to get easier to write a story or create something that's going to resonate that's going to create those emotions that we speak about and all those chemicals 
mm -hmm. um, because you've, you've got two key pieces of information. Why we're doing it, who we're doing it for, what do they want? Um, and people only connect with stories, and you said it, David, when there's, when there's a shared sort of value there, shared belief where it's real, and you can't get that without knowing your customers, knowing who it's for, knowing your audience. It's like a good comedian. I did DMs. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to think of some stories to tell with MBDA the other day, and um, I thought, how can we tell stories with MBDA? And I, was, I just looked, I sat and I looked, and I thought, oh, I looked at all the stuff on the table. Mm. And um, there's a cup um, on Holly's desk that has been sitting there for ages. And I don't know anything, and it's, and it's got this, it's got a doodle of um, one of the flying guys out of Flash Gordon. I can't remember the, the chap's name, but it's the doodle of a flying guy out of Flash Gordon. Gordon's alive! And I was like, so I asked Holly, he goes, why have you got a doodle of Flash Gordon on your mug? And then she told me, oh, well, my mum, uh, went and took some of Holly's artwork and made stickers out of it. And then she put these stickers on some of this pottery that Holly's mum makes. So I was like, that's so what your mum makes pottery? Yeah. I was like, all oh, right, I didn't know that. Yeah. So then I was looking mm. at all these things, there was this website discovery, that Holly's mum. Discovery, And I was like, all mm. oh, right. And I just thought, all of that came from this, this mug. And then I was like, right, I'll go ask James Ward. So James Ward, why have you got a Barbados mug that you're very precious about and you've had for donkeys and it's faded? Oh, he goes, I've had that for I don't know, 17 years. Something like that. Yeah. And he says, I've had it in every job I've been to. I was like, really? I was like, yeah. Fascinating. These yeah. tiny little nuggets of information mm. about people and what they do. And, the, and Sam had a mug that she took around work with her. I've got a mug from, that I bought from New York that's now got paintbrushes in and sitting in the cellar. I don't know why, but it is. And it's mm. just, it, it's just, it's, it's so much more interesting than, you know, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, we know your name. But I, I just... There's just so many possibilities of telling stories. You just start little granular little nuggets. Yeah. And you just well, that's how they say you remembered like uninteresting things like sequences of numbers, isn't it? You make up a story with a story. those numbers in, yeah. which um, then means you don't forget. Mm. Um, otherwise, if they were just numbers on their own, you will forget. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're doing it all the time. Gossip. What's the most important, most interesting, or most watched, or viewed, or clicked upon stuff? Gossip. The mail online. Stories. People love the mail online. It? It's that, isn't it? Yeah. Story, storytellers. Are all, you know, every, you know, all the great stories out there, everybody, everybody does remember, and they, they have such an impact. Harry Potter, you know what I mean? Mm. There's just, I mean, there's, and they can create so much rich media content from them. You know, mm. dare I say, we have to go there. It is National Red Dead Redemption Day, and Rockstar are probably one of the greatest storytellers yeah. out there. And people yeah. absorb that content because it's good storytelling content. Yeah. Mm. And I think people look at the, the likes of Netflix. There's a reason Netflix has so many subscribers because they are delivering good story based yeah. content that people can not only watch but talk about with other people mm. and, enjoy, and share. And I think there's that, you know, as much as. It's so much easier to share. You're so much. I'm so much more willing. I think that's something that uh, Microsoft was saying. That when they produced this, uh, these videos from the NHS about some of the, uh, the, the, uh, the storytelling that they've been doing, the people that they were telling the stories about actually went and shared it. Yeah. Because they were so proud of it, they went and shared their own. They even shared. They even shared. This, so I wish they're, they're more willing to share Microsoft's marketing materials. A because it features them, which is okay. But they love the whole messaging and they love that story that's being told. I'm so much more willing to go and share anything that's story-based than the National Lottery videos. The, mm -hmm. Because A, I've seen it, I like the content that it's, I like the way it's filmed, the music, or how it's made me mm. feel. If it makes me feel good about myself, I'm gonna share that because I want you to feel good about yourself. If it makes me feel crap, how, would I share that? Oh, here, this made me feel awful. Do you wanna have a look at it? Mm. Yeah. it it's all about that sharing sort of good times, really. Yeah. Stuff that you enjoy. I, I love your story just about the mugs then. It, it got me thinking like, actually, if you look hard enough at anything, there's more of a story to tell. It isn't just a mug. That isn't just a pair of trainers you have on. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's where they go with you, what you do, you know, and it's, it's how these mm. mugs follow you around for, through the good times and the bad times yeah. and, and how it came into your position, you know. And when you look at whether that's a product or service, I think it's exactly the same. If you, you could just look at it for its benefits, its features, its tech specs, or whatever it may be, but actually what's the story you can wrap around that that's, mm. that's going to resonate? And I, yeah, the, the mug thing I think is great. You look hard enough, there's a story there. There's a story everywhere. And I think that's, I, I, sometimes I, I think that's the, the, the biggest trick. And I think that's why um, a lot of um, companies come to BDA or go to marketing agencies because of that creative spark that... I need an idea, I need a story, but where do I start? I've looked in the obvious places of, well, here's our customers, mm, but you can't always go there. But sometimes they don't always see it. They don't see what's in front of their face because they're mm. too close to it as well. Yeah. 
they don't necessarily see the same stories that we might mm. because it's just well we sell widgets yeah and we've always sold widgets and i just think they're a widget whereas we can say well what does the widget do why do people buy it why did you start creating it in the first mm. place mm. what's it enabled them to do it's Big word, yeah. enable. A yeah. lot of these things are enablers. Product services are enablers. And it's mm. not about actually the specs, it's the, the enablement that comes with it. I've been looking oh, at... Yeah, it's a good word. Um, storytelling. I think storytelling is... Actually, sto I think storytelling... Well, obviously, storytelling is quite old hat. But there's there's a process of, of how you build storytelling. And I've been looking into it. It's called design thinking. I don't know if you've heard of design I've, thinking. I've heard mm. the phrase, yeah. yeah. And it's it's really deep in that how much you can design think if, around a product and how you reverse it and basically how you form stories based on design thinking. Um, that's a podcast in itself. Um, and we could probably do one, uh, yeah, one of those yeah. later. But yeah, and so um, but, but that sort of got me looking at those. So there's Pixar. Pixar have got their, their 12 steps. I think there's 12 steps of telling mm -hmm. creative stories. Um, there's a couple of books that I should, we can put some links into mm. about um, mm. how to basically start uh, looking for stories and, uh, and good tips for starting storytelling. And of course, there's Disney, who I think is probably more. I, I think Disney edge in storytelling. They just, if it's not from a theme park, it's from video content. It's from you know everything that Disney seems to it's touch. The whole experience, experience is they, the story. They tell the, the stories. Well, wrap that, that, that wraps up into an experience. It's yeah. all about you know you they have there's a reason why the magic kingdom is where the magic kingdom is where that castle is yeah you know, to, to pull people in mm -hmm. and to create a, a uh, landmark a landmark mm. as you pin if you've got a landmark you can pin your story around your landmark mm. and you can pull people around yeah i always think stories like fishing rods i don't know why but they're like fishing rods why go on because let's say if i've got the i don't know where i'm going with this <laughs> i love when, i love when lee my, has these my, moments my brain just goes off go on but let's say you've got the you've got the Here's, here's, the, here's, so here's this fishing rod, and it, on the end of it is my good stuff, right? Okay? What, bait? Yeah, my bait. Okay, right? yeah. So, but, you know, I've got a, you've got to hook it out there, so you, I don't realise what's going on. So I'm going to get, you know, so what I'm going to do, right? Yeah. And then, right at the other end of that, a little me wandering around, don't really know what's going on. Oh, look, what's this? This could be an interesting story. I don't know where I'm going with this story, but I'm going to follow it. On the, on the company, really, really. I'm following me. I'm following me little story as it goes, and it might be going through the reeds, might go through a cave, a little baity bit, and I'm a little fish. Then it might go all over this journey that was discovery and adventure. And then I finally get to the end, and look, oh yeah, this is what it's all about. I might have been caught and eaten and gutted and turned into sushi, but hey, that's the story I went on. So I think a story is a bit like a fish. <laughs> that is the most <laughs> awful thing I've ever heard. And again, it's like, it, it reels you in. That's what story does. It does reel you in. Real there we go. Oh, Stories yeah. reel you in. They reel you in. <laughs> we didn't need to know about the maggots and the reeds, did we? <laughs> See? That's how my brain works. Took me on a journey. Took you on a journey. Absolutely. And that's journeys and storytelling, that's the way it is. Now you've got me in your keep net. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, there's, there's, there's a whole raft of things we'll put in the show notes that I, <laughs> I just definitely do think are, are more than worth your, uh, a listen and a read. Um, anybody want to else add anything else onto storytelling? I think we, Anybody, could go, we could go on for quite a while about this. We could go on for quite it's, a while. It's a good subject. And yes. We can get quite enthusiastic about it. Yes, you can see. You can tell start, story to, um, start telling stories about fishing rods. Anyway, so are we wrapping up? Are we done? I reckon. Yeah, I, I reckon. I reckon. Streets. Right, let's get out of here. Right, so uh, don't forget to hook up with us on uh, <laughs> see what our you did social there. media channels. Yeah. Uh, social media channels um, on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Twitter, Sorry, Twitter, uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, please, I would love a question. Um, someone, please post us a question. I'd love a question that we can that we can answer. So, if you've got a question out there that you want to fire at us, please fire away. And until episode forty-two, this is forty-one signing off. So, until next week, me and Rob are going home to go play Red Dead Redemption. Yes, we are. And uh, sixty hours of, of storytelling adventure. So we might not be back next week, but hey. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Until next week, see you later. Party. Bye-bye.